Friday the 13th in 3D. A 1982 rated R film, one hour and 35 minute movie, 2.35 to one aspect ratio. This was filmed with special 3D cameras. This is directed by Steve Miner, starring Dana Kimmel as Chris. You've got uh, Paul Krataka as Rick, and you know I'm gonna mess these names up, it's just what I do. Uh, you got Richard Brooker as Jason. This is a, a $2.2 million budget. It grossed $36 million. It was the first film to boot E.T. off the big screen when it was out and second only to Pol Poltergeist uh, in 1982 in horror films. Look, y'all, you know I don't do horror. I just don't do it. Um, I'm not a fanboy. I don't, I don't, I've never seen any of the others in the series. Uh, this is the only one because it was 3D that I picked this up out, out of all of them. I believe this is the only 3D one. And I ordered the wrong version. I ended up getting the glasses and I said, well, you know, and I put it on the shelf and I'm like, well, maybe I'm not going to review it then. But I thought, I got to thinking, why not review this for these anaglyph guys that don't have, um, 3D capabilities. Maybe you don't have a 3D TV. Maybe you don't have a 3D projector. Uh, maybe you don't have a 3D player. Maybe you don't, you know. And so what's it like just to get it, pop it in, put these glasses on, watch it on your television? What's it like? Well, we're going to get into the 3D in a minute. Um, actually, it was very, very good. And I really uh, have a whole new appreciation for this um, anaglyph type 3D. All right. So what do you got here? This is third in the series. This takes place moments after the second one ended. You got a Jason on the run, a wounded Jason on the run, a maskless, maskless Jason on the run. You got uh, 12 kids that are going up to a camp to, uh, on, on the lake to, uh, to camp out and have a good time. And of course, Jason's gonna, sh Jason's gonna show up. Look, this is 1982. This is the era of sex, drugs, and rock and roll. I mean, the the, uh, the dialogue in here is cringy, to say the least. I mean, you know, she shows up at the camp with her friends, her boyfriend's already there, and the first thing he says is, hey, when are we going to get down and do it, you know? Uh, let's let's go. I want to screw, you know? And she's like, hold off, you know? We got a whole week. And he's like, yeah, well, I can only take so many cold showers, you know? So the dialogue is just 1982-ish. This is pre pre AIDS, you know, AIDS hit the AIDS hit the market, uh, hit the market. AIDS came on the scene in 1985, right? And so this is this is free love era. And you got your stoners in here and you've got uh, uh, it's just it's just a, a a rock and roll drug thing, you know. And that's just how it was in 82. That's what that's what it was like. Anyway, uh, you got 12 people here, you're going to have 12 victims. This whole set was built on, it was all built on, on, on set. I mean, the, the barn, the, the cabin, the lake was, was dug out uh, for the movie. The lake was dug out. Um, in fact, it had leaked and drained out during the filming of the movie, but they managed to get it back. This, this has special 3D cameras in here, very special 3D cameras. In fact, they paid so much attention to the 3D here that, um, the actors would stand around sometimes for hours as they try to get the 3D right. Um, there was a, there's there's one scene in here with a, with a hot poker that it took 34 takes, 34 takes. And there's a scene in here where somebody throws a wallet at the camera and they had to do it like 16 times. I mean, they gave no consideration really to the actors or the dialogue. They did, but the idea here was to get the 3D out to get the, 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 the horror out of the screen and, and into your face. And let me say this about this. Uh, this is really not horror to me. I mean, it's more of a suspense. That's what really makes this movie good. I had such a great time with it because everything builds up. You got this music track, excellent, excellent music track. I mean, to me, this is more like a, an Alfred Hitchcock suspense, right? Right when you think something's gonna happen, you know, and somebody pops up and something's gonna happen, it's generally not a threat, um, but then when the threat happens, you don't expect it, and it does. That's what makes it so cool. That's what makes it so cool. I um, mean, you got some characters in here that pop up, uh, some gangsters or something that were over in a store and things like that. But look, 
the gist of this is it's Jason, and he's gonna he's gonna seek his revenge out on these people in the cabin. I mean, there's some controver contra controversial scenes in here uh, where uh, Chris is recalling a scene where she was uh, attacked in the woods at night. There was some controversy whether or not she was raped uh, and whether or not they cut that out. Um, there's a girl in here that's pregnant that gets stabbed in a, in a, in a precarious place, which is kind of weird. But, you know, so there's some controversies that went on about this. Um, I want to say this, though. Um, let's talk about the 3D. Let me, let me, I, I want to move away from the movie now because I don't want this to be too long. I'm already at five minutes. Let's talk about the 3D. It is absolutely great. Even with these anaglyph glasses, it's incredible. And they did this just, per, you know, I mean, they, for 3D, that's what they did here. You got poker, scene, you got this poker coming out. You've got, uh, you got, um, what do you call it? Pitchforks coming out. You got popcorn popping and coming up in your face on your glasses. And you got your typical yo-yo, you know, your typical yo-yo throw where they're going to throw the yo-yo and it comes out. And then you got this, you got this, you got a juggling scene in here. All this for the 3D. Um, and that's why they did it. And they had special cameras, um, special cameras on cranes and stuff. In fact, Paramount was so worried that they, it wouldn't show right at the theaters that um, they contracted somebody to make special lenses to go on the projectors and they paid a million dollars to have these lenses manufactured to get them out to the theaters um, and I think it came out in a thousand theaters in 3D so they really really pushed this 3D um, that was the purpose of it to, to, to get this out in 3D which really made it quite a uh, quite different for than all the other ones from what I'm reading because I didn't watch the other ones like I said so listen um, I really enjoyed this I, I thought it was good and I'm like I'm not gonna do much horror you know I'm really not you know I don't I don't do much horror. Um, but I'm gonna have to rate this I'm gonna give this movie um, for the movie itself I'm gonna give it uh, 3.75 stars and for the 3d I'm gonna give it 3.75 stars um, because I I enjoyed it even with these anaglyph glasses. That's it's just amazing how well it looks in this anaglyph. So um, hopefully you can you know if you don't have any 3D capabilities, you'll go ahead and pick this up and watch it in 3D. And I, you know, I'll probably do some more horror. I mean, it's not like you know, it's not like I'm going to put on these 3D glasses, right? I'm not like I'm going to put these 3D glasses on and. Jason's going to walk in the room and pick up that mask over there that I had on the rocking chair. Well, I thought I had it on the rocking chair anyway. Um, so anyway, what did you think? I mean, did you, did you see it in 3D? Did you see it in 2D? Did you maybe see it at the, at the theaters in 1982 in 3D? I don't know. Maybe, maybe you did. And maybe, maybe you picked up the other version of this. But anyway, let me know. Uh, I want you to leave some comments below. Um, hit that like and subscribe button. I want you to have a good night. And as always, I just want to say, God bless.